okay, so we're looking at regression lines and the change of variable and also a hypothesis test for correlation. Now, that's what was given in the advanced information. The change of variable, I suspect, could be an exponential change. So this is using your AS, like the last chapter in AS when you do exponentials. So that's what's in your specification. I've tried to write a question around it. Um, hopefully it works. Let's have a look. So we've got a school, starts a campaign, reducing staff, student absences, not staff. And the idea is the absences go down. So we're expecting a negative correlation because as the weeks go up, we've got the lessons are going down. So the missed lessons are going down. OK, so data is coded. We've got X equals T and Y equals log S. So if you think about it, that graph that's being plotted is a graph of on the X axis, you've got T and on the Y axis, you've got log S. And you want to calculate the product moment correlation coefficient. And this is where this is important between T and log S. Now, you're not given log, you're given just S. So in your calculator, you have to make sure you type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into the X column and log 240, log 150, log 101. So for part A, if you're using the class whiz, you're going to menu 6, your number 2. In the X column, as I said, you're typing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the Y column, you're typing in log 240, log 150, log 101, log 65, log 45, and so on. And what you should get when you then press, you go out of it, you press option, you get a choice that says regression calc. And what you should see is an R value of minus 0.999. And you can just write calculation using calculator. Nobody is expecting you to do anything manual with that. It will probably only be worth a few marks. Part B, you're going to use your answer to explain why an exponential form is likely to be a good model. So first of all, we're going to say R is close to minus 1, showing strong negative correlation so we're now saying because that r value remember r values are between minus one and one minus one is perfect negative which is very close to and one is perfect positive right so showing strong negative correlation points are close to a straight line it's to straight line for t and log s which can be rearranged rearranged to exponential form. Okay. You're then told that the head teacher believes that the campaign is showing promise. Okay, great. Carry out a hypothesis test to determine at 5% if there is evidence to support it. Now, hypothesis testing on regression is one of the easiest topics. So you're getting a regression line, you're getting a hypothesis test. You, you see that immediately, you're going to know that your H0 is this, well, it's a row, but it looks like a P. If you wrote it and yours look like a P, not a problem. Row equals one and H1 You've got to think, what does that mean? Well, she is saying it's showing promise. So she's expecting it to have an effect. So to become, you know, to stay negative. So less than zero. And now we're going to carry out the hypothesis test. So the first thing we need to do is find our critical value. So you're going to look at your formula book and it's page 37 on your formula book and you get this table. Now, the bit of the table we're interested in is our sample size, which it was five weeks. So we're going to go down to five and then 5%, which gives us this value here. So what we have found is that we, we are looking for this value here, which is 0 0.8054, and that is our critical value. So we're going to say critical value equals, and because we're dealing with a negative correlation, we're going to make it minus. We're always thinking about what's in the tails, okay? So we know that minus 0.999 
is less than minus 0 0.8054 because it's therefore smaller in, in the tails. So it's not, it's weird. It's not what we expect it to be. We want everything to be in our happy space. If it's not there, we can reject H0. And we say there is evidence to suggest um, there is evidence to suggest that the head teacher is correct is correct right so we're just talking about evidence if it was the other way around there is not enough evidence to reject h naught and show that the head teacher is correct so we're always talking about evidence here okay then it goes on to say, show that the relationship may be expressed in the form y equals mx plus c, expressing m and c in terms of p and q. So if we go back to the beginning, we're given that the model can be given in this form. So s equals p, q to the power of t. Okay, um, so let's take that. Oops. Right, let's um, put an extra sheet in. Yeah. Okay, so we can say S equals P Q to the T. We're going to log both sides. Now, typically this means log to the base 10. You could do it to any base, but in stats, that's normally what we're using, unless it tells you otherwise. So then you've got log P, remember with logs, when you times them, you're actually adding them. And then also anything to the power can come down. So we get log s equals log p plus t log q. And now what you want to do is you want to compare it to y equals mx plus c. We know that y is log s. So we've got y equals log s. That's what we were given initially. We know that x is the same as t. Okay, so we're going to say... Um, x equals t. Now, in front of the t is the m. In Attached to the t here, we have log q. So we're going to say our m is equal to log q. And we're going to say our c must therefore be log p. And that's your connection and you're connecting which one is which. You're then told the regression line is found to be so we're given this regression line and we want to find P and Q to two significant figures and also explain what they are in context. OK, so looking at what we're given here, we can see that P, um, sorry, the gradient is minus 0 0.1817. So we've already said our M is equivalent to log Q. So we're going to say log Q equals minus 0 0.1817. Log P is equal to 2.5505. Now remember, we're assuming these to be base 10. So therefore, Q is 10 to the power of 0 0.1817. And P is 10 to the power of 2.5505. When you calculate those in your calculator, you get 0 0.66 and you get 355.2. So to two significant figures, that's going to be 350. All right. What does that mean in context? So if we look at part E, so this is part E, part one, part two. So it tells us. Sorry, this should be 360. It tells us that when that value of P is essentially telling us what happens when this is one. Now that's going to be one when T is zero because anything to the power of zero is one. So when T is zero, that's when we're starting off. So there are 360 absences initially or to begin with. And the 0.66 tells us the absences are reducing by a factor 
of 0.66 every week. And part F is a teacher what the whole academic year because you have to extrapolate. So what that means is you're taking data from, you know, ages away, it doesn't make sense to do so. So extrapolation um, is not reliable. Um, more than five weeks, not in data set. Not in data set. Something like that. That should be sufficient. Oh, sorry, excuse the writing. So hopefully that makes sense for that question. Um, and we'll have a look at the next one in a second.